What if the way you move this week could retrain your cells to handle sugar like a metabolically healthy person again? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today we're looking at new evidence comparing resistance training and cardio for preventing diabetes and obesity, plus how blood flow restriction, also called keiatsu, can help you build strength safely with light loads. I'm Alara Skye. We'll keep this direct and practical. How insulin resistance develops quietly. Why strength work targets it more effectively than long cardio sessions how steady endurance activity rejuvenates your immune system, and how to combine them without burning out. Insulin resistance often creeps in long before a lab flags it. You feel tired after meals, hungry again too soon, and stuck with belly fat that won't budge. Exercise helps, but different modes drive different cellular changes. The question is, which gives you the biggest metabolic payoff? A controlled study in obese, high-fat diet mice compared resistance-style training to endurance style training. Both limited fat gain versus doing nothing, but resistance training produced greater improvements in glucose and insulin tolerance. That means better blood sugar control and healthier insulin sensitivity than either endurance training or being sedentary. The strength benefit wasn't explained by big muscles. Resistance trained mice had less visceral and subcutaneous fat without notable muscle growth. The training reprogrammed how energy was used sharpening insulin response even with modest efforts. Endurance work boosted stamina and cardiovascular capacity, but it barely moved the needle on insulin sensitivity. Mechanisms differed. Resistance training improved whole body insulin handling across tests, whereas endurance training primarily remodeled cardiovascular and endurance-related signaling. Importantly, the effective strength protocol was brief and focused, short repeated efforts rather than long sessions, suggesting you can earn metabolic gains efficiently. That doesn't sideline cardio. A study in older adults showed decades of consistent endurance training preserved natural killer, NK cell metabolism. Their immune cells generated energy more like those of younger people with lower chronic inflammation and better stress resilience. In practical terms, you recover from illness and everyday stressors faster when you keep moderate cardio in the mix. Mitochondrial health ties this together. Endurance-trained participants showed higher mitochondrial density and efficiency in their NK cells, more and healthier batteries to power cellular work. When mitochondria hold up, you maintain energy, repair tissues faster, and tolerate life's stressors with fewer setbacks. There is a ceiling. Cardiologist Dr. James O'Keefe's research warns that doing intense exercise four to seven hours per week can erase many benefits. Overdoing high volume cardio elevates stress hormones and undermines recovery. Moderate, consistent sessions are the sweet spot, enough to energize you, not exhaust you. Now to blood flow restriction, or katsu. Developed in 1966 by Dr. Yoshiaki Sato, it uses soft cuffs on your arms or thighs to gently restrict blood flow while you exercise. The mild, temporary drop in oxygen creates hypoxia that triggers myokines, anti-inflammatory messengers that drive muscle protein synthesis, and favorable hormone signaling, even when you're lifting only light weights or using body weight. This delivers measurable strength and muscle tone gains with minimal joint stress. It's useful for older adults, anyone rehabbing, or if you prefer low loads. The body treats the session like heavy training at the cellular level, so you gain strength without the pain and long recovery associated with maximal weights. You can integrate katsu simply. Use gentle pressure during short routines about 15 to 20 minutes, while doing squats, lunges, curls, or even walking. The goal isn't a tourniquet. It's mild venous restriction that creates a safe metabolic challenge. Katsu devices differ from basic bands by applying intermittent, not just constant, pressure, which makes dialing in the right level easier. A practical note from the field. The Katsu C4 model is recommended because the C-series avoids Bluetooth, which is cited as a source of unnecessary electromagnetic fields. 
You also get automatic intermittent pressure without manual adjustments. If you choose to incorporate Kiatsu, keep sessions short and stop if you feel numbness or sharp pain. So how do you blend all of this for metabolic and immune strength? First, lift briefly, but regularly. Aim for about 20 minutes twice a week, prioritizing compound moves like squats, rows, and push-ups. This teaches your muscles to absorb glucose instead of storing it as fat, stabilizing your energy across the day. Second, layer in kiatsu to multiply results with light loads. You can even use it during easy walks or mobility drills to boost circulation and maintain progress when joints are sensitive. Keep the total time modest and the pressure gentle. Third, use moderate cardio to recharge your immune system and mitochondria. Walking, cycling, or swimming at a comfortable pace builds mitochondrial density and oxygen efficiency. One hour of daily walking is a clear, sustainable target that supports resilience without spiking stress. Fourth, alternate intensities to protect recovery. Avoid stacking hard days back to back. Rotate brief resistance sessions with moderate endurance or active rest. You should finish sessions feeling recharged, not depleted, which is a good proxy for keeping cortisol in check. Fifth, align nutrition with mitochondrial function. Remove seed oils, canola, soybean, corn, sunflower, safflower, because their high linoleic acid content disrupts cellular energy production. Cook with grass-fed butter, ghee, or tallow, and avoid high LA meats like conventional chicken and pork. Support training with nutrient-dense whole foods and healthy carbohydrates like fruit and root vegetables to maintain stable blood sugar during recovery. If you prefer data, you can use a continuous glucose monitor for two to four weeks and test standard servings of rice, potatoes, bread, pasta, and grapes on separate days. The highest, fastest spike reveals your personal carb response type, helping you target changes more precisely as you train and adjust fats. Remember the boundary conditions. Intensity helps, but excess undermines the goal. Moderate, consistent movement, plus short, targeted strength work, enhanced when appropriate with katsu, creates the balance that stabilizes glucose, strengthens immunity, and supports long-term metabolic health without burnout. Here's your challenge. Over the next seven days, complete two 20-minute resistance sessions, add four days of moderate walking for 60 minutes, and remove seed oils from your kitchen. If you have access to katsu, add one 15-minute light load session on a walking day. Track how your post-meal energy and cravings change by day seven. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.